Hi there, I'm Callie. I'm on a Go3 track. I'm using these two handheld, sophisticated instruments to measure air pollution in my environment. I'm measuring ozone, ground level ozone, and black carbon, which are two of the most dangerous air pollutants. And I'm outside on an adventure to monitor different levels of air pollution in my environment. So let's go ahead and head inside and learn more about the Go3 track project. So now that we're inside, we're going to go over the instrumentation that you'll be using on your track. As you saw, there's two instruments that we're going to be using to measure air pollution. And I'm going to go through uh, the ozone monitor first, and then my team member, Jess, is going to walk us through the black carbon monitor. So this is the POM, or the personal ozone monitor, and it measures ground level ozone, which is formed by the interaction of sunlight and various pollutants. And these pollutants are emitted from a variety of sources like vehicles, power plants, um, and much more. So this is the microath, and this measures black carbon, which is more commonly known as soot. And soot, or black carbon, is formed by incomplete combustion of fuel. So different sources include cook stoves, campfires, diesel engines, burning coal, uh, to name a few. And like ozone, black carbon also has some serious health impacts. Because it's made up of small particles, it's respirable and thus can penetrate the lungs and cause some cardiovascular and respiratory illness. So as I'm out and about on a track, I'm measuring both my ground level ozone and black carbon exposure, as well as my GPS coordinates to track my location. When I'm done on the track, I'm going to go back into the classroom and upload the data that was logged on these instruments given the Go3 software that's provided in your package. So with this data, I'm going to upload it to, to the computer and a Google map will be created of the track so I can visualize my track and share my pollution data with the world. You'll be conducting your own tracks based on your knowledge and curiosity of these pollutants. You'll be designing and conducting these tracks in the classroom so you can talk to teachers, talk to your classmates, you can even contact Go3 Track Tech Support for ideas on how to conduct a track. A few examples would be taking these instruments on a hike to explore ozone and black carbon levels as you climb higher. Or you can take these instruments to an industrial area, measure it there, and then compare it to pollution levels in a forest or a more rural setting. When you're done with the track, you'll go back into the classroom and upload the data and share it on the Go3 website, where you can post comments and observations about your own track, compare it to other students' tracks who are conducting experiments around the country, post photos, ask questions, and much more. So now let's get into the logistics of the instruments. I'm going to start with the palm, but keep in mind that both of these instruments will be running at the same time, and a track is not complete unless you have both instruments turned on while tracking. It's really important that you make sure the palm is fully charged before going on your track. The battery life of the palm is about five hours, after which you'll start to see a low voltage warning on the LCD display screen. When you see the low voltage warning, then you, you'll know that it's time to recharge the battery. To do so, you'll just undo the Velcro and take the battery out of the battery pack. We use the Tenergy Universal Smart Charger to charge the POPS battery, so make sure that all of the pieces are connected. And simply plug it into the wall. Flip it to the 7.4 volts, and then wait for the green light to flash indicating that the battery is full, and this will take about four hours. So now that the battery is fully charged, you're ready to turn on the instrument by just flipping this switch on the top to the right, and then you're gonna let the palm warm up for 15 minutes. This is really important because the fi first 15 minutes of data will be a bit erratic as the instrument's electronics warm up. While we're waiting for the instrument to warm up, let's go over some basic care. First off, you'll notice that if you hit this button on the right side of the front panel, you can access a menu. Please do not access this menu. If you do, you can uh, make modifications to the settings that we've already made for your track and it can jeopardize your data and ruin your track. So do not, under any circumstances, 
go into this menu unless specifically instructed by Go3 Track Tech Support. The only screen that you should be concerned with is the main screen, which you'll see now is reading ozone, O3 in parts per billion, and also switches between reading temperature in Celsius and pressure in millibars, as well as a screen that says log. If you don't see the screen that says log, please contact Go3 Track Tech Support right away because this means that you're not storing your data and we want log data on every track. Once the instrument is warmed up for 15 minutes and you're seeing the, on the display screen both of these readings, then you'll be able to go outside and turn on the GPS. And the GPS really turns on by itself but you do need to go outside and stand still away from tall buildings and trees so that you can get a valid satellite connection. You'll simply just go outside and wait until an asterisk appears in the corner of the screen and this will denote a valid connection to, to your GPS. It's important to know that you have to be outside to get connected to GPS and it's possible that your GPS may drop out based on satellite availability. But you can look on the palm once your GPS has been enabled and on the display screen, if you click this button on the left side of the front panel, you'll be able to see latitude and longitude and that way you know that your coordinates are being tracked. Once, you're, once you've got GPS going, you can go ahead on your track and you'll upload the data after every track. To the computer. So after you're done with this check, you'll go back in and upload the data before conducting the next check. Lastly, just some basic care about the instrument. As you can see, it's a very expensive and sophisticated instrument, so please take care of it. Don't drop it, don't get it wet. Try not to place it in direct heat or sun for extended periods of time. Also, do not put it in the direct line of a polluting source, such as putting it right in front of the tailpipe of a car or directly over a flame. And lastly, don't put your finger over the inlet. This is where air comes into the instrument and blocking this airflow would jeopardize your data. So now I'm gonna hand it over to my team member, Jess, who's gonna talk to you about the MicroAth Black Carbon Monitor. Hi, my name is Jess and I'm going to introduce you to the MicroAth, which is the instrument that you will be using to collect black carbon data. Before the track, you're going to want to make sure that your instrument is fully charged. To get a full charge on your instrument, you will insert the USB into the port located at the back of the instrument and plug it into a wall outlet. Four hours of charging the instrument in the wall outlet will give you 24 hours of usage with the instrument. Also, before your track, you're going to want to make sure that there is a filter strip installed. To do that, you will simply open the black flap on the front of the instrument to see that the filter strip is placed inside. Then you will reseal the flap and close it tightly to make sure that dust and debris does not enter the instrument. At some point during your tracks, you may notice that there is a red light flashing on the front of the instrument. That means that the filter strip is dirty and it will need to be changed. To change the filter strip, you can put the instrument in your left hand and you will see that there is a button on the bottom of the instrument. You'll place your left thumb on the bottom of the instrument and open the flap again to see that there is the filter strip. To take out the filter strip, you're simply going to depress the button on the bottom and pull the filter strip out. You will notice that the top of the filter strip is white and the bottom is silver. To, re to reinsert the filter strip, you'll want to make sure that the white part is facing the top of the instrument and the silver part is facing the button located on the bottom of the instrument. You will also want to make sure that the pinhole on the filter strip is coming out of the slot and that it is not pointed in toward the instrument. To place the filter strip back in the instrument, you will simply hold down the button and re-enter the filter strip. Then you will want to Seal the flap again very tightly, again to make sure that dust and debris does not enter the instrument. Now you are ready to collect some data. To turn on the instrument, you will simply hold down the button located on the front and you will hear it power on. You will then see the two lights turn on. 
After that, you will hear the pump starting on the instrument and there will be a chirp to indicate that you can start collecting data. Now you'll want to let the instrument warm up for 15 minutes. After that, you're ready to go on your track. To turn off the instrument after your track, you're going to hold down the power button to hear it power off. And now I just wanted to let you know that when you are using this instrument, there is no LCD screen. You will not be able to see the data that is being collected. You'll have to plug it into the computer in order to see that data. Also, there's no GPS, so always remember to take both the micro F and the POM on all of your tracks so that the data points can be correlated to the GPS locations. Now for some basic care instructions on the micro F. You're always going to want to make sure that the front seal on the instrument is tightly closed so you do not let dust and debris into the instrument. Also, do not get the instrument wet, drop it, or put it in front of a direct pollution source. Now I'm going to give the floor to Callie so she can wrap things up. Hi again. So now that we're all familiar with the instruments, we're almost ready to go on a track. Please remember that the instruments need to be turned on as close to the same time as possible. And this is really important because they need to be logging data at the same time for a track to be complete. So you'll turn them on at the same time and let both of them warm up for 15 minutes. If you want to use the external tubing provided on your track, you can do so. And the tubing can be helpful for a number of different instances. For example, if you want to take the instruments on a hike and put them in, the back, in a backpack, then you can use the external tubing so you can get access to outdoor air. Another instance where the tubing is helpful is if you want to sample outside the window of a moving vehicle. You could simply put the tubing outside of the window. So to attach the tubing for the palm, you use the clear tubing and attach it on the white inlet on the front panel of the instrument. Likewise, for the micro lath, you'll use the black tubing and screw it in into the inlet hole on the front panel. All right, let's go.